Oh, no, thanks. By heck, she can certainly tickle the ivories. A very noisy tickle, in my opinion. Of course, it's only my opinion. Not your cup of tea, Mrs. Wakeley. Once you've heard Russ Conway, it spoils you for others. Showing off, I call it. Well, she's certainly showing off our old chapel piano, I'll give you that. It's better than I thought. Especially tuned to concert pitch, whatever that may be. Though why the country should be put to such expense for such people, I don't know. It's always been good enough for Mrs. Rumbold. Dear, you have given yourself a nasty bang on the forehead, sir. However did it happen? Oh, just a slight disagreement with the wife. <laughs> Only joking, Mrs. Wakeley. Actually, we got the builders in. One of them left a the ladder where I wasn't expecting it. The working classes are so careless these days. Excuse me, sir. All right, you can stop now. Time to go back to the wing. Is that really the best you can do, Jenny? All right, then line up with the others. Look sharp. You're right. She's quite something. I thought you'd be impressed. Who's quite something? The college was tipping up a big thing three years ago. No, I'm not surprised. And she chucked it all away for the cause. Thank you. I'm with you now. The bomb slinger. Not anymore, Dr. Mays. That's why she'll be considered for parole. She's a different person. Oh, yes. Had a success at last, have we? People do change as they grow older, you know. Especially growing from 19 to 22. Even you, perhaps. <laughs> nah, not him. Perennial student, that one. Oh, come on, Governor, it's past the half hour. How many hopefuls has Southwind got for her this time, apart from Kath Nessim? Just Margaret Alice McGlashan. Oh, Maggie the Menace. And Jenny Carter having a second go. No, she's not. Huh? But I've done a report on her. Yes, I know, so have I. She's changed her mind. Is it possible? Jenny Carter. Yes? Going back into herself, is she? Yes, I've noticed that. Won't even talk about her kids anymore. Time she was out of here. Well, we could all say that, Chief. Oh, well, the first 90 years are the worst. Keep an eye on her. Oh, right. Hello. Waitress service in this part of the establishment, eh? Some folk is all the luck, eh, Chief? Ah, she's awful good to her chain, is she not? You'll get your reward in a lovely Protestant heaven, don't Oh, that's nice, Glenda. Something to look forward to. It's my leg, you see, Chief. Gets terrible bad at the end of the day. Well, there's a thing. We have something in common, after all. You don't have to be a skiver, you know. Oh, I'm not bad. Yes, my wee lamb. But as far as the parole board is concerned, this report is favourable. Yes. You sound doubtful, Miss Parrish. Instinctively, I have every reason to doubt Maggie's suitability, but... Instinct isn't reason, is it? Neither is hope, but that's all we've got to base our judgment on in Maggie's case. The hope that she'll benefit from parole. In any case, it's not up to us to pass judgment. No, as long as we can give the local review committee all the information we can from our own observation, we'll have done our share. She's been in before, hasn't she? <laughs> She's not unknown to us. Paroled before? No, never in long enough to qualify. We'll have had more than 18 months of her this time. Although ever since we filled in her LB2, she's been remarkably well-behaved for her. Positively sickening. Oh, well, good grief, why not? I'd smarm my way out of here, too, in her shoes. And look, if she is behaving better than usual now because of, uh, because of this carrot, isn't that a good mark for the parole system? No, all I ask is, if she does get out of here, let her keep up the good behaviour. Otherwise, we'll all be suffering from the pleasure of her company again only too soon. Oh. All right, thank you, Miss Parrish. Now, Dr Mays. This report of yours, the, um, the jargon, what does it mean? Jargon, indeed. Well, simply, Maggie is now a middle-aged woman. Her health has been complicated by her, um, her lifestyle, as they would say nowadays. Physically, she is an incipient mess. Now, I believe that she knows that. I don't think she wants to go back on the game, but, uh, then what's she going to do instead? <laughs> Teach in Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Clark. Ah, oh, you seem to have made a thorough study of the case. Oh, I know. We're asked for details. As a result, we all know the prisoner better. Another good mark for parole. You'd be surprised Maggie hasn't reacted more violently against society. Good. Well, that's something for the local review committee to get their teeth into tomorrow. Great help to them. Well, to Maggie, too. I hope she's the one who needs help. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Now, the only other case is Catherine Nessim. No qualms about her, Miss Parrish? None whatever. Really? 
If there's anyone who's waiting to benefit from the whole conception of parole, it's Kath. Let her out now and she'll have something to give the world. Keep her locked up and I don't answer for the consequences. You stupid wing, yeah. I'm sorry. I'll really? give you something to be sorry for in a minute. Well, I didn't mean it. Oh, neither you did now. Sure, you wouldn't hurt your own Maggie, would you now? Good evening. The uneasy peace of the last few months in Northern Ireland has been shattered by a bomb explosion in a Belfast fish restaurant. Reports are still coming in. But while it's believed that there are no fatalities, several people have been injured, some of them seriously. This year, a lot at it again. Not my lot. I've told Actually, you before. They're all the same. Yes, are bloody kids with bangers. Fit. Well, what happened to Jenny Carter? What happened? She lost a stone in weight and bit her fingernails down to the elbows last time she tried for parole. That's what happened. Quite a good reason for not trying again, she thinks. And is that what you think? No, but I can see why she does. It's a hell of a strain waiting three months just to have the prison gate slammed in your face again. When you've been hoping, counting on it. But you welfare people have got her a new flat. And didn't you tell her that's why she was turned down last time? No, Peter, I did not tell her that because we don't know why she was turned down. Well, we can use our heads, though, can't we? I mean, obviously, they weren't going to let her go back to that drunken lout of a husband. All those kids in one lousy room. But now it is right. different. Right, you're preaching to the converted. I know she's not going to harm another of them. But it wasn't lack of love that made her hit too hard. It's because she loves them so much. She can't face the uncertainty again. And another disappointment. Well, are you going to let it go at that? Not on your sweet life. Thanks. Jenny will try again. We'll see. What are you making this time? A doll, is it? For Debbie? It's her turn, of course, isn't it? She'll love it. Let me see it when it's finished, will you? Mrs. McLashan, will you come to my office for a moment, please? Certainly, Miss Parrish. Here, do you think she fancies me, eh? Eh? Eh, what? If I'm not back here in ten minutes, if it's the Padre or the police, I'm not fancy. They're more my type. <laughs> I'm coming, Miss Parrish. <laughs> You're not going to give me parole, Miss Parrish? It's not up to me to give or withhold it. It's for the local review committee to recommend to the parole board. They decide from what you tell them. Hey, and what do you tell them about me? I submit a report, it's true. Then so does welfare and the medical officer and the padre. Holy Moses. No, just the padre. Ach, it's a waste of time. Why? My past record. I really think it's your future record they're interested in. They'll forget the past, if you will, Maggie. Start again. Start again, is it, miss? You'll know, Miss Parrish, about me and Glenda. You've been all kind of sensitive and that. If I get my parole, maybe I'll be out of here same time as her. Is that important? Aye. I want to see to it Glenda doesn't make my mistakes. Make a mess of her life when we get out of here. You've only got the one life, miss. That's all the good Lord gives us. Isn't that right, Miss Parrish? I want to protect Glenda. Do I feel just like a mother to that child? Yes. Well, you must try and see that she doesn't end up in care like your other children. That's just lies. Who told you that? That's nothing but lies. I swear to God, I never neglected my children. Him, Maggie, he's got enough on his plate. But listen. If you get parole, and I don't say that you will, that doesn't mean to say that you're free. You'll be outside these walls, yes, that's true. But a beady eye will be kept on you. You've got to go straight. That's what parole means. We'll soon know if you don't, because you'll be back inside here without even your good leg touching the ground on the way. Now, a member of the local review committee will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30. You needn't report for work. Just wait on the wing till we send for you. Thank you, Maggie, and good luck. Thank you, miss. 
A man will it be? Most likely, yes. Let's hope he's under 70, eh? Any chance? Stinking jealous old bitch. Yes, indeed. Nothing, miss. Thank you, miss. May I come in? Yes, of course. Music? Beethoven number five. Symphony? No, the Emperor. Piano concerto in E flat. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I don't know very much about that kind of music. Incredible. What? The first time I heard that key turn, I transmogrified into a zombie. You come along and talk about 76 trombones or something and bring me back to Beethoven. It's part of my job. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. There's a word. Transmogrified wasn't bad. <laughs> oh, I was going bad, wasn't I? Like an old pomegranate. You saved me. Good. Which reminds me about the use of the travel piano. They're going to stop it? No, no, of course not. I've been trying to make better arrangements for you, that's all. It's a question of fair share. At the piano? It's used quite a lot, you know. Well, who uses it? Well, the Glee Club. You should hear them. An old lady trying to take a grade one exam. She's been trying for ages. Other people. Well, they don't matter. Oh, yes, they do. And don't forget, the piano's in the chapel, which itself matters to quite a lot of people. Kaz, is your future career worth giving up some of your work pay for? Well, of course, yes. Then I think I can arrange for some of your working time to be spent in practice. How much is some? Well, I'm not sure. An hour, two hours? Not enough. What? Not nearly enough. If I'm really going to catch up, I'll need at least six hours. A day? At least? But that's not possible. It's not reasonable. I'm not talking about reason, Miss Parrish. I'm talking about music. Now, just a minute. Let me remind you where you are. I don't need to remind you. Thank you very much. I didn't ask to be brought back from the dead. That was your idea. I can chuck it if I have to. Go back to stuffing pencils into miserable boxes, if that's what you want me to do. But either I play the piano, or I don't play the piano. It's not a pastime, a hobby for wet Sunday afternoons. It's my whole life. It's all or nothing with you, isn't it, Kath? Total commitment. Total? It doesn't have to be used wrongly. Indeed, it doesn't. You remember that discussion we had about parole? Parole? Yes. It's time. In three months, you'll have completed a third of your sentence. It's time to start considering your case. It's not true. When? What's going to happen? Tomorrow, tomorrow? you will meet a member of the local review committee. I can't believe it. Tomorrow, really? No, wait, something. Kath, hold it. Don't get carried away. Use your head, just this once. I said tomorrow they will start considering your case. And they'll go on considering it for weeks, months. And even then, after all, they might well turn you down. No. Yes, Kath, they might. Yours was considered a grave offence, remember? I remember. Yes. Well, let's take it calmly, shall we? Sensibly? And hopefully? Have you no home to go to, Mr. Radley? Yeah, that's what my wife says. You keep us all too busy. Jealous, Well, oh, can you blame her? Have you seen Miss Parrish? Hi. Excuse me. Excuse me, thank you. Oh, headache? How do I get that girl six hours practice a day? Tell me that, and I'll feel better. Six? Oh, that's a hefty dollar for vocational training, isn't it? That's just the minimum, she says. And where? There's only one decent piano in the whole damn prison, and other people have a right to use it too. Like Mrs. Rumbo. <laughs> exactly like Mrs. Rumbo. And then there's supervision. Oh dear, why couldn't she play the flute or the triangle or something that she could practice in her own room? Oh, well, that wouldn't be too popular. Drive everyone else mad. What? The noise. <laughs> Do you think they've even noticed? I think I've got an idea. An idea? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Whatever must this sound like to somebody like her? Hell isn't just other people. It's the noise in it.
Was it someone we knew? Well, it's from his parish. I thought she wasn't looking so good. I'm not one to complain, Chief, you know that. But I really don't think we should be asked to cope with things like this. Like what? You must inquire at the education department. I wasn't born with X-ray eyes. Hello. Well, they didn't waste much time. That's good. Not much demand, I suppose. Ah, so you know about this, Mr. Radley. Yeah, my idea, really. Excuse me one moment while we unlock. Oh. Miss Persons? I suppose I don't have to know the contents of every package that comes into this high-security building, but... Uh, I'd call it a uh, prisoner's aid, I think. Do take care. What sort of prisoner's aid? I mean, am I allowed 20 questions? Well, it's something to keep a girl occupied and quiet. Uh, this way you want to disparage? What? Oh, you know, no, not in here. Oh. Uh, perhaps we could know fairly quickly where we may lay our burden down. I'm sure it's rather heavy. Cass Nessie's room. Oh, good gracious, I hadn't realised it would be so big. Well, it's got to be life-size to be any use to her. Uh, mm -hmm. Off the bed, Miss Parrish. Yes, yes, just for a moment. I dare say you'll find the exercise has done as good. Look on the right side. Thank you, Mrs. Wiggly. We'll have to go somewhere else after use, I suppose. If she wants some sleep. No, no, it's got legs of its own. Well, it's got to be the correct height, or she won't get the proper feel of it. We thought a dummy piano would be very useful to her when she hasn't got the real thing. No, don't. I wasn't going to interrupt you. But perhaps you could do with a few bars rest. A very difficult passage. It shouldn't be. Three years ago, it was child's play. Well, perhaps three years ago, you were less self-critical, musically. If you mean I should have spent more time playing the revolutionary than being one, I couldn't agree more. You've all said it, and it's true. Stupid, sinful waste of time. Which? The crime or the punishment? Both. Haven't you learnt anything from these recent experiences? I play better. I'm different. I shall play better still when I've got these working again. Your talents. Remarkable. Thank you. Do you play the piano or anything? No, but I listen. I appreciate. Yes. Yes, I think you do. You started young, of course. I know you were studying at music school and became involved with us, but before then... Gosh, I can't remember not playing the piano. My father swears I was nearly born in one. <laughs> in Antofagasta. Well, no, it's that. Chilly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, they were on a concert tour. I arrived early. What a nuisance I must have been to them even then. Do you travel with them? Oh, no, no, not for long. No, it was too difficult. My mother's aunt looked after me in Guildford whenever they were away. If I know anything about a musician's life, that was quite often. Mm. No brothers or sisters? Good heavens, no. I think they were quite astonished when I came along. Well, at their age. Well, I didn't mind. I had them all to myself whenever they came back. I'd play them new pieces I'd learnt, perfecting my technique. Sometimes they'd stop talking to each other and really listen. I remember once... Do you know the Earl King, Schubert? Oh, the piano part's fiendishly difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, they just got home and I started playing it. Oh, I'd been practising like crazy while they were away. And like I hoped, my father started to sing. Oh, his voice was at its very best about then. Well, I kept on playing and he went on singing. My mother standing by the doorway listening. Kind of magic. And then, when we'd finished, he turned to me and bowed. Not joking, just as though I'd been her. And then she hugged me and cried. And he cried, and I cried soppy lot. How old were you? Eight, nine. It was just before I went away to school. 
I didn't see very much of them after that, just during the vacation, maybe in Carr or Stuttgart or somewhere. Not very often. And you loved them very much? I wanted them to love me. But I do know, miss. Not possible, Jenny. Nobody knows except the parole board. They get me in here because they think I'll do it again. To Debbie or Tommy or, or little Sean. Like I did... No, of Ken. course you won't. Dr Mays told you. You love them. I loved him. And I killed him. Look, Jenny, let me tell you again. You were driven to it because of the way you had to live. Now, it's different now. You've got a flat. And you won't have to cope with your husband's drink problems all by yourself anymore. We'll be there to help you. Come on. Now, give it a chance. The kiddies need their mum, Jenny. The sooner the better. Don't tell them. In case no, I don't... No, no, I won't tell them. They cried last time. When I didn't come home. And who was your professor? Steinhardt. Oh. Uh, sorry. Oh. Are you busy? Do you want me, Dr. Mays? Yes. Thank you, Kat. Having a quick pray? Now, that could be the solution to all our problems. Don't mock. <laughs> What's yours? I've no problem for once. I'm off to a medics conference. What, another? We've got the Home Office due tonight, though, don't forget. That is why I'm here. 6.30? Thank you. And after the ministerial sherry, shall we eat somewhere? Dutch. If you like. Good. Yes, very. Oh, excuse me, madam. Thank you. Come and see me before you go off duty, Miss Jenkins. Shh, shh, shh. I remember when they used to sell mailbags. What's the matter? Don't you appreciate good music? Oh, I know all about good music, thank you, Dr. Mays. I come from the north, home of the oratorio. Oh, you've been one, haven't you? One of those ladies in nighties and pearls, rows of you, do it the messiah. <laughs> I don't sing as it happens, but two members of my family have had the honour of appearing under Sir Malcolm. Get away. Of course, he was only Dr. Sergeant then. Still, I believe you need a lot of talent to become that kind of doctor. Thank you. Now, my question was, is it wise to give so much more consideration to one prisoner than the others? Here they've been having you, son. There's no tune to I had a bit of dough. That's right, Maggie. It's not supposed to make a noise. Such as the Joseph Coopers. What? Well, you know, that telly programme where they have to guess what he's playing on one of those things. Pull the other one as good bells on it. Look, it's so that I can practice without boring you lot. Practice? You've done nothing but bloody play the piano all day. What more do you want? We've got to work for our money, haven't we? Talk about special treatment. Not special, Maggie. Just a bit unusual, that's all. Well, you all get the same chance if you want it. You can study or train for what you're good at. I'm all for a chance to practice what I'm good at, eh, girls? <laughs> would you do that for us, miss? A couple of fellas a day would do just to practice, aren't they? <laughs> and how about you, May? Anybody making sure your thief and we pause is still in good nick, eh? Not bloody likely enough, unless you perish your spit. Then you stand a chance. That's enough, Maggie. That's not true, and you know it. Right, come on, out of here, all of you. Too many of you in here. <laughs> Can you not practice on the one out here? Well, no, it's just not good enough. Not good enough, is it? May, we're the real posh little pianist we've got here. Come on, give us a tune. Come on, it's here, yes, if you were the tune. Come on, why not? I mean, you wouldn't like the sort of music I play. Oh, well, do you know what we like when we play? Well, besides, it would sound ludicrous on that. Don't! Sit down and play. Hey, what's going on here? We're going to get given a wee concert, miss. Oh, no. that's nice. <laughs> right, belt up the lot of you. Come on, hold your nice a wee minute. We're going to get a special little concert oh, here. Oh, All right, so then. A big hand for the star of the evening.
in a duet. Come on, Glenda, we'll show her. It's a nice change from the telly. You all right? I've got to get it. I've got to. I've got to. Get what? What are you on about? Parole. I've got to get out of here. Hey, hold on. Have a bit of patience. Patience. Now look, they're only just starting to consider your case. It's going to take months, and then there's no guarantee. Stop. What's up, love? Ever heard the one about the man who dreamt he was in a madhouse and then woke up and found that he was? Didn't you like playing the piano for them? I hated it. I hated it. Yeah, but that's going to be your job, isn't it? Playing the piano for people? I'm mean, anyway. Doesn't hurt to show them why you're getting all this extra attention. Vocational training, do they call it? Well, yes. Like cooking, typing, car maintenance? A bit, yes. But listen, those others haven't been given any special talent for anything. So you might say it's a bit harder for them. Harder? Well, they don't even like what they do. But you do, don't you? Do you suppose Maggie likes her job? You think she's even got a talent for being a tart? I don't. You don't know much about ordinary people, do you? Where well, you were brought up, I suppose. And people in glass houses shouldn't throw bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what he said was quite interesting, don't you think? Oh, yes, he knows what he's talking about. Mm. And it is an uphill struggle to get the great British public to accept anything new. Parole is eight years old. Hmm. And how old is an eye for an eye? Oh. I doubt very much that the ordinary man in the street really knows what parole is. Oh, well, as far as he's concerned, parole means that when the beak says you go down for three years, you actually get out in one. Hmm. But he doesn't like it, does he? Feels let down, mainly at roaming the street with butcher's knives and they should be safely locked up, just like the judge said. <laughs> well, I wonder what that is. Bombs case, a tube station. Oh, no. Well, it's Not quite safe again. here, madam. We're out of the danger zone. Ah. You? A revolutionary? Well, I didn't say I was, but I could have been. Uh -huh. Well, every young person worth their salt has to be a bit of a rebel. It's all part of growing up. Is it? Mm. Oh, didn't you rebel? I don't think so, no, not particularly. I did the same sort of things as the rest of my group, but that is conforming, not rebelling. We wore the same sort of gear, we invented a few in-phrases, but we did not go about throwing bombs at people. And you weren't any different from the rest of us. Oh, thanks. In that way. <laughs> but Kath Nessam is different. She joined the wrong sort of group. From choice. Oh, wasn't it? I wonder. I caught up with her case properly today. Yes, I saw you. I suspect the choice was made for her. By Battersea's Che Guevara. Well, by all her life before then. Elderly parents, trying to make contact with them, being lonely, wanting to please, be noticed, and then suddenly, bam, College, young people, fun, new ideas, excitement, and somebody who actually says he loves you. <laughs> oh, all right. So it's bad as it's Che Guevara, but what do you do? Shut the door on it all. Trot back to your first love, the Steinway concert grand, or open your arms and let it all happen to you. Make a god of him, follow his footsteps. No, she is not the sort of young woman who could just let it happen. She would have to dedicate herself. Oh, yes, how right you are, Peter. She'd have to be dedicated. That's what makes her an artist. But my fear is that if the cell door is slammed in her face, she would dedicate herself to a great fat nothing. And what a waste that would be of a great talent, Peter. What a waste.
smashing in these the grating. And a patch of nails is. On the sixth bed, you spun the floor's word is the headlines again. Hey, what's that? Hey, I'm lucky. God, not another. Why? Not a damn Davis by them not trying to murder us in our beds. Oh, what are you on about? Did you hear that? How could I? You was talking all the time. Some dirty bastard brought another lot of innocent Christians to the kingdom come. Oh, that. What do you mean, all that? I ain't interested in all that stuff. Stuff, do you call it? And what but it was happened to you, eh? Was that the stuff? What are you on about, man? Bombs in London. Yeah, well, I never noticed. You'd have noticed enough of us, your relatives got massacred. I haven't got any. You've got me, haven't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. Now, if I'd been blown to pieces by some bloody terrorist, you'd have noticed that soon enough, wouldn't you? Why? Why what? Why'd anybody want to blow you to pieces? You ain't no terrorist, are you? That's the whole point, you daft bin. They don't go choosing who they kill. They just chuck the bombs on at anybody. What for? It's... God knows. Ask her, she's one of them bloody murderers. In Ireland? Yeah, they never let her in. Same thing, though, wherever. Yeah. Do you know what I'd like to do, then? I'd like to round them all up, all them terrorists, and a great big rubbish them somewhere and put a great big stinking bomb underneath a lot of them. That'd teach them. Yeah, too true. True. Yeah, they go flaming, running around after her all the time, making sure she gets every damn thing she wants. Oh, it's not right, is it? No, it isn't. No. Just you wait, then. She'll get her licence all right, no bother. Different for the likes of me. Oh, Mac, you get your licence too. You got her. Because you said I could come and stay with you when I get out. A service to mankind, that's what I'm given. But they'd rather let her out than me how that she is. And make sure that she has special toys to play with meanwhile. Why should she have a special toy? She could do without it. Yes, I'm sure you will, too. Oh, 20 minutes jammed together like sardines in a tub. They tell you why? Do they, heck? I felt like an individual head of cattle down there. No. <laughs> I, I had to fight back an overwhelming desire to batter on the door, screaming. Let me out. Out of where? Oh, a paralysed tube train. It's horrible. Jemima's let her down again. Jemima? <laughs> That's my car. It's taken me an hour and ten minutes to get here. Well, never mind. You're not late. Dr. Mays isn't here yet, and that was Mrs. Armitage held up on South Wing. Trouble? Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it so much if I hadn't been sitting opposite one of those what to do if you see a suspicious package notices. <laughs> there was one ten-year-old with a very bulgy school bag just opposite. Oh, by the way, we'd be glad to know that there's a licence for Maggie McGlashan. Hallelujah! Amen. Perhaps you'd like to see she gets it, Charles. It's Miss Parrish's long weekend. It'll be a pleasure. <sighs> Nothing for Jenny Carter? Not yet, no. That's a more complicated case, of course. Not just a review committee job. The board will want to know about her. And no doubt for the same reason. No news yet of Catherine Nassim. I suppose it is essential to notify McGlashan immediately. Well, they couldn't hold it, say, over the weekend? Hold it? Well, Catherine Nassim and Jenny Carter applied at more or less the same time. Now, McGlashan has every right to know as soon as possible. Her state of anxiety is arguably as great as theirs. Yep. See you later, then. Why wasn't her room locked? I really can't say. I wasn't on duty here. Then I shall have to find out, won't I? So, who did it, then? That's just the point, Chief. We don't know. It was like this when I brought her back from work, as she calls it. The girl is quite capable of answering for herself, Mrs. Oh, Wakefield. Sorry, I'm sure. Well? I really haven't a clue. In any case, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? A valuable piece of educational equipment got here especially for your benefit, vandalised, and it doesn't matter. Let me tell you, it does matter. That is government property and will have to be repaired at government expense. Taxpayers' expense. Not to put it too bluntly, my expense. Quite right, Chief. They just don't appreciate what's being done for them nowadays, these youngsters. Comes too easy. Oh, yes, Maggie. And what do you know about this? About what? Chief? How that came to be busted. Me? Were you having a little practice, Maggie? God's my witness, Chief. I never went near it. Don't we know how important it is to her and all? Then her gonna be a star? A star? That's Miss Paris thinks, isn't it? And the governor. Ah, oh, we're all going to see her when we get out of here. All your old pals. Right, Maggie, get out. Oh. 
What a lovely thought. Maggie and her friends in a box at the Royal Albert Hall. The mind boggles. They do say that music soothes a savage breast. They say a lot of daft things. All right, make a report about it. And keep your ears open. Maggie's been off work with her leg. No proof. No. It'll be her. Oh, the meeting's not over, is it? Drawing peacefully to a close, I should say. Good, I'll get me dinner. I could do with it. We've had a bit of an upset, sir. That dummy keyboard of yours, vandalised, Mr. Radley, I'm sorry to say, vandalised. Ah, well, get a little McGlashan, would you please? We don't know she's responsible, sir. Well, that's not what I wonder for. Mm. Wheel her into the office, would you? Hello. Mr. Radley. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Wakeley. Uh, leave the door ajar, would you please? I never touched it. Touched what, Maggie? Victimization, that's what it is. Filthy screws. Oh, that'll do now. Picking on me all the time. I never done nothing you'd not prove otherwise, I'm telling you. McGlashan, sit down and shut up. You know who's most against you, Maggie? Oh, somebody special, is there? Yes, you yourself. You're your own worst enemy. You're so dishonest you can't even tell yourself the truth. Now, you've never been considered for parole before, have you? Where's the time that was? Can you read? Of course I can read. Well, have a go at that, then. I need my glasses. Home Office Probation and Aftercare Department. The Secretary of State hereby authorises the release and licence of Margaret Alice McGlashan within 15 days of the date hereof. Hey. That means you got your parole. That bit there. Paul? Oh. Mm. Who shall, on release and during the period of this licence, comply with the following conditions, or any other conditions which may be substituted from time to time. Number one. She shall report without delay to the officer in charge of the probation and aftercare office at High Street, Kilburn. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, what a mess. You heard about it? Yes, I met the chief. There's smoke curling out of each nostril. Yes, I'm afraid I made it worse. Oh? Well, I seemed like I didn't care, didn't appreciate what you've all been trying to do for me. Yes, yeah, so that's the bad news. Now for the good. Parole? Not yet, I'm sorry. Oh. Do you know what I find most difficult? I mean, you just, just don't know what's going on in this place. One terrifying interview with a funny little man with grey side whiskers and half-moon specks like something out of Dickens. Well, that's what you see at the local review committee and they're nothing. Nothing at all. Well, I mean, they might be computers deciding our fate. Right. The system could be better. You may as well know Maggie's got hers. Smashing. Now, run-of-the-mill cases always come through quicker. They don't need to go to the parole board, usually. I'm not run-of-the-mill. Well, your old teacher doesn't seem to think so. Dine hard? That's the good news. You've seen him. Yes. Well, tell me, tell me, what did he say? Oh, enough to make your head too big for your boots. I shan't tell you what. But what you're doing here now is valuable, he says, pro tem. I have to get that thing mended now. I hope it's possible. And I've been allowed to bring this from him. It's been classed as educational. He wants you to know he'll help you all he can. Give it to me. It seems you were very good. I was very good. I am very good. And the last one. Are you still with me, Maggie? Number mm. six. They want you to be of good behaviour and to lead an industrious life. Very foreign character, sir. That's what I'll be from this day out. I may God strike me dead as an empty Guinness bottle. Why not just try making a nice, easy promise to start with, Maggie, when you've got some hope of keeping? Like these little rules here. You'll jolly well have to, you know, if you want to stay outside. Let's face it, Maggie, you're a big girl now. The competition outside's getting younger every day, have you noticed? Maybe the time's come to retire gracefully and take the chance of being offered to try another kind of life. The old one hasn't given you much, has it? You come to think of it? Spent a lot of your time shut up in the nick. Has it ever occurred to you, Maggie? Maybe you're not cut out for a life of crime. How's about a canter down the straight, eh? Oh, 
anyway, congratulations, Maggie, and good luck. Hey, Max, what cheeky Charlie got in, eh? About my license. Oh, no, they take you down. No, so that's not right. It isn't right. What are they doing to you, Dan? I haven't. What? Why don't you listen to your bent? They gave it, yeah? But that's great, Max. That's marvellous, isn't it? It's no bastard, like I was stupid or something. Yeah, it's great. So when did you get out, then? Fifteen days. Oh, Maggie, that's good. That means you'll be out before me after all. Get things ready, like you said, eh, Mags? Oh, um, curtains and that. Yeah, great. Oh, and Kath, your parents. I've seen them. You have? They do understand. Couldn't. Look, they mustn't come here. They'd try so hard, but they'd be appalled. I've hurt them enough, no. All right, you needn't see them if you don't want them. But what is important is that you can go to them when you're released. They're waiting for you. That'll probably be your trump card. Your career's waiting, your home's waiting. I think you've got a very big chance. Look, I'm sorry. Um, can I have them back again, please? Thanks. broke, madam. That's really what saved her. That may be, but you got her breathing again. What made you go back, do you know? I, I don't know, madam. I, I was on my way to the club, but well, I, I just felt something was wrong. Jenny had been acting strangely for some time. We'd all noticed that. And she refused to see her children on Saturday, and well, then when I went to lock her up, she, uh, she didn't say a usual good night to me. Just sat there, staring vacantly at well, anyway, we're very grateful for your prompt action. You handled the situation very efficiently. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Quite a promising young officer when she tries. Right. And do up your buttons. Don't overdo the praise, will you, Chief? She was simply doing her duty, Mr. Rudley. She was off duty. That's right, Miss Clark. A shocking tragedy has been averted. And doubly shocking, as we now know that Jenny's licence was being granted at that very moment. She's going to need a lot of support. Mm. Which I'm sure she'll get from the welfare department. Yeah. Well, the sooner she's out of here, the better. Mm. Was that a comment of some sort, Mrs. Armitage? No. Simply concurring, I think, is the word, Miss Clark. She will need a lot of support. We'll give her that. Good. But I thought the probation service was understaffed. Oh, dear me. Every department is understaffed. Are you at full strength? No. But while she's in here, her other children are safe. Mrs. Armitage, it is not for us to decide who goes out or when. It is fraught with complications, and let us be grateful that we can leave that in the hands of the local review committee and the parole board, and finally, of course, to the Home Secretary. I have just had a communication from him. He tells me that the parole board, after much discussion, have also recommended a license for Catherine Nessim. Oh, Good. Good. Which, with regret, the Home Secretary has felt obliged to refuse. Why? It's disappointing for all of us. Especially you, Miss Parrish. I'm not disappointed, Governor. I'm appalled. What does he think he's doing? I think he's doing right, Miss Clark. Right? It's a complete denial of the whole concept of parole. If that girl is kept in here for another 12 months, there's no chance of her becoming a useful citizen ever again, let alone making full use of her talents. What's right about keeping her in here and letting Maggie McGlashan off the hook? What good is she going to do anybody? Well, if Maggie gets the right probation officer, she might at least do them less harm. She's as likely to change her outlook on life as Stonehenge. Yes, she's entitled to the chance. Right, so. fine, let her out and good riddance, but give Kath Nessim the same chance. Miss Parrish, 
I share your belief in Perot. We all know that prison should be the last resort for most women because our function is largely negative. And in spite of all our efforts, many of them leave here more criminally minded than when they arrived. And in the case of long sentences, hopelessly institutionalised, I believe there is more chance of them outside, properly supervised and supported. Well, that's just my point. Yes, I know it is, Miss Parrish, but forgive me. You are looking at the problem only from the prisoner's point of view. The Home Office has a responsibility to the public as well. Are you suggesting Kath would leave here and start chucking bombs again? It's not unknown for parolees to reoffend. Not, however, in this case, I should say, and so says the parole board, and so indeed is the Home Secretary himself. Then why this decision? Public opinion. We all know Kath, her character and the way her mind works, but the public only knows that this girl planted a bomb in a public place. They've heard the court say, lock her up for a long time so she can't do it again. And in three years she's out, walking the public streets. Oh. What a field day for the media, bomber released. Now, I want parole to succeed. And so do you, I think. Most of you. But it can only be done slowly. One false step, one release, which rubs the public up the wrong way, and we've taken ten steps back. So it's throw her to the lions, is it? Sums down for cast time. Not really, Miss Clark. After all, it's the only first time she's been considered. But a year's a long time to wait. Can she wait that long? Sorry to interrupt your practice, but I have something to tell you. Mm. 